Welcome back, everybody. And as we continue to answer that question, can we feed ourselves? We'll discuss pest control with Rishi Mohansing, who's an entomologist with the Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries. And uh, we will find out exactly what, exact, how to engage in pest control. Welcome, Rishi. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. So we're speaking, we're speaking pest control. What exactly is a pest? Now, basically, when we talk about pests, it can be any living organism that affects your growth and production of your plant. And when we say pests, we are talking about insect pests, we are talking about mites, we are talking about diseases, something called nematodes, and even weeds. Wow. So uh, how, are, how are these different um, species, so to say, uh, how are they categorized? Right. So when we talk about categorizing them, basically based on how they feed or how they attack your plants. For instance, you have what in the insect category, we have what is called biting and chewing pests. You have piercing and sucking pests, and you even have a rasping pests. Rasping means scraping. When it comes to your diseases, you have your fungi, you have your bacteria, and you have your viruses. And like I said, you have something called nematodes, and you also have your weeds as groups. So what are some of the symptoms for each of these categories of pests on the plant? Right. So basically, just like I always tell people, just like a human, when you get sick, basically you go to the doctor and based on your symptoms, your doctor will tell you what is your issue. In the same way, when your pest is attacking your crop, basically it shows symptoms. So when we are dealing with your biting and chewing pests, basically you're going to get pieces of your plant missing. You are going to get holes on your plant, leaf flower and your fruit. If it is a piercing pest, you're going to get crinkling and curling of the young parts of your plant. Now, if it's a rasping pest, basically you're going to get it, you will get a scar. It's just like a human, if you get a scrape, after a while it forms into a brown scab or a scar. Right. Yeah. If it is a fungal problem, you're going to see spotting on your plant. Now, the key words here is usually the spots are of the same shape and size, and it always has a dry look. If it's a bacteria, basically you get uneven shape and size, and it has a wet look. When it comes to your viruses, basically you get crinkling and curling of all the leaves of your plant, both the young and the old leaves, and you get a symptom called mottling. Mottling, basically, it's a yellow-green type look. Now, you don't want to mistake that for a nutrient deficiency, right? Because nutrient deficiencies, you usually see it on your young leaves or your old leaves, not the entire plant. Right. If it's a nematode problem, which is the final category, you get total wilting of your plant. I see. And that sounds very dire for the plants indeed. So what are some of the steps to manage the pests in your garden? Right. So basically, when you're talking about managing your pests, you're, we're talking about natural things, or you can do your chemical approach, or both. Now, your natural methods of actually controlling your pests basically is good agricultural practices. And when we say good agricultural practices, we mean basic things that you're accustomed to it. Proper spacing, proper weed control, fertilizing your plant at the correct time with the correct nutrients, watering the plant, but not overwatering your plants, not wetting your plant. That's a major thing that causes diseases. We take the hose or we take the water and we wet the plant when you're supposed to apply it to the soil and allow, it for the, allow the root system to take it up and not watering late in the evening or in the night. You're supposed to water in the morning periods. So those are some of the practices when talking about the natural approach to actually dealing with your pests and diseases. And when it comes to, you know, some of the pests like mice and, and insects and such, what can we do at home? Right, so some of the natural things you can find around your house, for instance, dishwashing liquid, about two to three tablespoons of dishwashing liquid, in a liter of water that can be used to spray onto your plant every few days or so and it helps if it is you have things like garlic neem leaves all those things you can crush together you can soak it in water overnight and apply that onto your plant as well and it helps all, right. all those are natural things you can find around your house that will actually help control your pests and pest, pest issues that is and uh, you mentioned there are chemical means as well. So what do I look for when buying something to get rid of pests, such as a pesticide? Right. So a lot of people, um, when you go to buy a chemical, basically, it doesn't matter what chemical. You think you buy a chemical, apply it, and it's supposed to work. 
Now, when you're going to buy a pesticide, the first thing you need to look for is what is called the active ingredient in your chemical. Basically, that is the poison, and that is what is going to do the killing. It must say what pests it will control. The next thing is something called the color code. On the end of the label, you will see a tin colored line. The line will be either blue, green, yellow, or red. For kitchen gardeners, home gardeners, uh, people who are growing crops for um, consumption should stick with your green label chemicals. These are, those are the safer ones and stay away from the red label chemicals. And the most important thing in that entire label is something called the pre-harvest interval. Basically, it means if I spray the crop today with a chemical, how many days after is it safe to pick your produce right. and then consume it? So what are the, well, you mentioned the color codes there, but go through a little bit, uh, what are the different types of pesticides? Right, so when the, um, the part of the word that says side basically means poison. So every word in front of side, basically that is what it is doing to kill, using right. to kill. So for instance, insect and side, basically it's an insecticide used to control insects. Fungus, fungi and side, fungicide is for fungus. So you cannot use a fungicide to control an insect, even though it's a chemical. So those are the little tricks you need to follow when you're buying and using your chemicals. Right. And uh, what are the modes of entry for a pesticide? Right. So when we say mode of entry, basically how it is actually working or getting into the system of your plant, you have two large categories. You have what is called contact and you have what is called systemic. Now, contact chemicals, and it says that on the label, contact chemicals, basically the droplets need to get in contact or fall on your pest to kill the pest or the disease. But a lot of times you have your pest hiding under your leaves, sometimes feeding inside of your plant. So that is why you need to know what group it falls under to know what type of chemical to use. So then you have your systemic ones. Systemic from the word system, it means this chemical gets into the system of your plant from the tip of the leaves to the tip of the root in your flowers and fruits. So wherever your pest is feeding, it will get the chemical and will die. Now that is a problem as well because it gets into your fruits. Right. So if you don't follow your pre-harvest interval, like I mentioned before, it means you could be picking your produce and eating it and there's chemicals still in it. That's why, let's say, use an example, if you have a seven day pre-harvest interval and you pick the produce in three days time and consume it, basically you have four days supply of chemical in that produce. And that is where we say um, you get all the residues and things like that. Right. All right. With that, I want to thank you. We have to leave it right there. Rishi Mohansing. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning and giving us this information. We are going to have to stick a pin in it because we do have to go upstairs to the TTT News Center for the News at 7. I was chatting with Rishi Mohansing, entomologist at the Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries. We now kick it upstairs for the News at 7 o'clock. <laughs>